It's never a dull moment in the world of AI. Here are the top updates this week. So a really interesting result by this guy, Rob Lynch, he actually found that GPT was lazier in December. And this is actually not surprising because GPT was trained on data from the real world. And how we humans operate is generally in December, it's end of year, it's holiday season, so people tend to just work less and they look forward to just taking time off for the holidays. And since GPT was trained on all the data in the world, it actually also learned to become lazier in December. So this guy Rob Lynch found that GPT for Turbo produces significantly shorter completions or outputs when it thinks it's December versus when it thinks it's May. And here's the data if you want to dig into the details. So if it thinks it's May, its mean output token length is this number. And then in December, it's significantly lower, as you can see here. And the result is statistically significant. In other news, this article claims that it's the first time AI has actually beat humans in a physical game. So this AI robot developed by researchers at ETH Zurich was trained to play this Libyrinth maze game. Now this isn't just a regular maze game, you need to basically use these two knobs to control the angle of the board to make the ball roll towards your end goal. And then there are also holes that you need to avoid. So I'll show you a video of how this works. You can see the dude is adjusting these knobs to change the angle of the board in order to move the ball in the right direction. And then there's a bunch of these holes there, so if the ball drops in the hole, then game over. So this robot, which they named Cyber Runner, is equipped with two motors, as well as a camera at the top here, so that it would play just like a human would. And then they used reinforcement learning to train this AI on like millions of iterations of these games, and eventually it learned how to play this very efficiently. They trained the robot on 6.06 .06 hours of games, and then just from that six hours, it was able to beat the human world record set by this guy. So the human set a time of 15.4 seconds, whereas the AI completed it in only 14.48 seconds. So 6% faster compared to the human world record. The more interesting thing is the robot also discovered shortcuts and found ways to cheat. And this actually led the researchers to step in and stop the AI from cheating. Like, no, you cannot just skip parts of the maze. So that was really fascinating. And if you're interested in how this reinforcement learning actually works in training a robot to do physical tasks, also see my previous video on this paper called Eureka, which goes more in depth uh, about reinforcement learning and how researchers have actually used this to train an AI to do pen spinning, which is a very difficult task for a robot to do traditionally. So check that out. So last week I talked about this article where researchers basically connected living human brains with electrodes and silicon chips to create this biocomputer. Now there are even more updates this week on that. So this article goes into more details on what it can do. But just to back up a bit, if you didn't know this already, we can already grow human brains and other tissues in a lab just from stem cells. But these researchers took it to another level, so they connected this living human brain in a lab with a silicon chip to create this biocomputer. And it turned out that this organic machine learning chip could really quickly learn speech recognition and math predictions. So it was first sent around 240 audio clips of adult males speaking Japanese, and then just on day zero, just from a single vowel sound, it was able to distinguish the speaker with 51% accuracy. And this is just day zero when it starts to learn for the first time. Two days later, that had improved to 78%. And this may or may not seem like a low number to you, but just think on that. If you were just given one single vowel sound, which could be from eight different males, how likely are you to predict the right one? This is actually quite impressive to me. It also learned to predict this nonlinear dynamic system very quickly. So you can see like in this example, the black is the true value and then B is before training. So it had no data. It just started learning for the first time. And then after only two days, the results are in red. So it very closely matches the true value. Same with like this chart. So the blue is before training. You can see it doesn't even come close to these black dots, but then after only two days of training, you can see that it's very correlated with the black dots. And what's cool about this is you can also upgrade the brain by just implanting more needle-like electrodes into the brain, which would in theory give it a greater number of neurons. 
and thus more computing power. Now, what can you do with these living human brains in a lab that are connected with these silicon chips? Currently, not much because you, you do, first of all, need to keep them alive. The technology is there to grow these brains from stem cells, but it's not like you can connect it to an actual human or anything like that yet. These are just like separate brains which you grow in a lab and you need to feed it a solution of nutrients to keep it alive. And then, of course, there are numerous ethical issues about this. I mean, this is a living human brain that you can talk to you can feed it information it can give back information you can clearly communicate with it so is it a sentient being does it have emotions does it know it exists and is it ethical to be doing all these experiments with these human brains in a lab so something to think about all right equally as interesting is this next article where three stanford graduate students developed an ai that can quite accurately determine a location just by scanning a photo so they called this AI pigeon or predicting image geolocations and it seems like they were trained with images from Google Street View. But what is really fascinating is after they trained this AI, even when it was presented with some photos it had never seen before, in the majority of cases the AI was able to accurately guess the location. So with this new power there's of course, a lot of benefits to it. For example, it can help people identify the locations of old photos from relatives or like, for example, in biology, where you could have like a really old photo of a critically endangered species, which has never been seen again, and we have no idea where the location is. But now with this technology, maybe we have a chance of actually predicting the location of that photo. But of course, there's a flip side to it where this can also expose information from any photo. And this could actually be quite dangerous. I mean, as long as someone can get your photo, if they have access to this AI, they can detect your location and then stalk you or something. And so because of these concerns, the authors have not made this model publicly available yet. But honestly, even if they don't make it publicly available, someone else will develop it in the future. And yeah, it's gonna be quite chaotic, but just be aware that this technology is out there. AI can definitely be trained to detect a location from any photo. All right, moving on to the next article. So researchers at MIT have developed this new technique that allows artists to have more control over animations of characters. This method uses a function called barycentric coordinates, which define how 2D and 3D objects can bend and stretch and move through space. And so basically you can like bend these nodes and coordinates to move this cat's tail, for example. Traditionally, other animation techniques are quite inflexible, and they only provide like one single option for one specific animation. So if the animator wanted to create a new animation, a new type of movement, then they would need to start from scratch. But with this new algorithm, the animator can basically manipulate this object to whatever movement it wants. And to jump into the detail of how this works, the artist can just take a 2D or 3D object and plug it into this, and it would create a cage of lines or nodes like you see here. And all the artist or the animator has to do is just drag these points or nodes to move the character and manipulate it to whatever movement they want. So if you're interested in using it, unfortunately it's not out yet, but they are planning to build this into an interactive interface that artists can easily use to create animations. This article is also very fascinating. So this famous painting called the De La Rosa by Raphael sparked a lot of debate among experts. So some people claim that the bottom part of the painting was actually not painted by Raphael, but from Raphael's pupil called Guili, whatever. But what researchers did was they trained an AI on basically all of Raphael's paintings. And so it could easily identify if a painting was painted by Raphael or someone else. And then that AI revealed that the lower part of the painting is actually indeed painted by Raphael. However, they also found that Joseph's face was not likely painted by Raphael. So over here. So actually this bottom part was painted by Raphael, but not this upper part. And this algorithm is 98% accurate in detecting paintings by Raphael in general. And this technology is actually not new. So a few years ago, J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, actually used a pseudonym to write another book. So J.K. Rowling wrote this book called The Cuckoo's Calling, but under the name of Robert whoever, Galbraith, hope I pronounced that right. But later researchers used AI and trained it on all of J.K. Rowling's writings. So 
the AI could very accurately determine whether a certain writing style was indeed written by J.K. Rowling. And then after the AI kind of confirmed that this Cuckoo's Calling book, which is supposedly written by Robert, it's actually written by J.K. Rowling. And then later Rowling confessed that she is indeed the author of the Cuckoo's Calling and she used a pen name Robert. So it's the same technology that was used here to train this AI on this guy's paintings and confirm that the bottom part of this painting was indeed painted by him. All right, final article. Researchers at MIT have used deep learning to discover a completely new class of compounds that can kill drug-resistant bacteria. This is really exciting, and I'll tell you why. These drug-resistant or antibiotic-resistant bacteria is among the biggest threats to human health. So an estimated 1.27 million deaths from antibiotic-resistant bacteria occurred in 2019. And no new classes of antibiotics have been developed for decades. But now this team at MIT have used AI to discover this new class of antibiotics. So the researchers screened around 12 million compounds, and then from that they tested around 280 compounds and found two that were particularly effective against MRSA, also known as methy... Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Yeah, what she said. Which, by the way, causes more than 10,000 deaths in the US per year. So this AI was able to identify two compounds that was very effective against MRSA. And they tested this in mice, and it reduced the MRSA population in their bodies by a factor of 10. And these new compounds appear to kill bacteria by disrupting their ability to maintain this electrochemical gradient across their cell membranes. And the good thing is, it only attacks these bacterial cell membranes, but it doesn't do any significant damage to human cell membranes. So they found that it's not toxic to human cells, and these new compounds that were identified by AI could definitely be used in the future for medical purposes. And that's it for the coolest updates in AI science and research this week. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. Also, we built a site where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.